Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, uh, back to working on this clutch arm that goes on a 75 horsepower steam traction engine that belongs to the Florida Flywheelers down in Florida. And uh, if you remember, we actually worked on boring this out in a previous video. I went up to Brian Block's shop up in Kentucky, and we used this big Monarch lathe to do this job on. Need to get this thing finished up. Uh, they're gonna be coming back through here in another week or two uh, to pick this up and I uh, need to have it ready for them. So to finish this up, I need to put some bronze bushings in here where we had to bore this out oversized. So basically the way this clutch works is this whole arm fits up on a the main uh, shaft that comes out of the steam engine, the crankshaft. And uh, depending on whether the clutch is engaged or disengaged, when it's disengaged, it's just the, the, the shaft is rotating, but the clutch arm is not. And then whenever you engage the clutch, all of a sudden this will go to turning with the shaft. And this a way to turn the power on and off uh, where the steam engine is running constantly. So it's, it's a clutch. Um, but over the years, the, the, when that thing was just free spinning, it wore the cast iron or the bushings inside of this down excessively. And we had to actually come in here and bore it out oversize. And the plan is that we're going to install some bronze bushings in here to get it back to size. They also had to uh, weld up the actual shaft where it had worn down. They've got it machined back down to a nominal size. I've got that dimension written down over here. I don't have that part to compare it to, but I know what we need to bore the inside of these bushings to. So to do this, uh, I've got the bronze bushings. Uh, they actually provided me one piece of bronze uh, that we're gonna use that will do one side. The other side, I had to purchase a piece of bronze. This came from McMaster Car, and uh, yeah, a chunk of bronze that size was rather expensive, but that's what we had to have, so that's what we're gonna do. But I will turn this down both the inside and outside diameters uh, to fit in here. So start with, we're gonna take this over to the lathe. Uh, we're gonna bore the inside to size. Uh, we wanna have a little bit of clearance between the, the shaft and these bushings so that it can free spin and we have room for oil in there. Uh, and he's told me what he wants me to bore this to. I've got that number written down. The outside diameter then needs to be turned concentric to the inside diameter for a pre press fit in these. And when I say press fit, the uh, diameter, the outside diameter of the bushings will be a couple of thousandths larger than the bore that this is going to go into. And I've looked it up. I got in my machinery's handbook, I think I need about three to four thousandths of interference. So in other words, these need to be about three to four thousandths larger diameter than what's in here. And we'll use the old heat trick. We'll actually heat this up, expand it, make it larger diameter. I'll probably also throw these in the freezer, which will shrink them down a little bit. And uh, so we won't be actually pressing that full three thousandths interference or four thousandths interference, whatever we end up with. Uh, it'll go in a lot easier, hopefully just drop right in. Uh, and then whenever it cools down and normalizes, it'll be shrunk together and fit just right. That's the game plan. Uh, before I get going turning, I want to uh, get some really good measurements uh, of the the, the the bore we have here on both sides and kind of so I know what I'm going to be turning to. And then we're going to start boring these out to the right size. So we're going to start again by getting some measurements here. And I'm just going to quickly measure this with the calipers to get a rough idea where we're at. And we're roughly three inches and three and three quarter inches. And that's a rough measurement. That's not what I'm going by here. But that tells me which uh, bore mic I need to grab. Let me go get it now. So to measure this, I'm going to be using one of these uh, bore micrometers. This is a little three-sided micrometer. They're really handy uh, for checking uh, bores. They're accurate to within about a half a thousandth of an inch. And this is much more accurate than using a snap gauge or something like that. Now, uh, I do want to check the calibration on it before I go just to make sure because I'm going to be measuring the inside with one uh, instrument measuring the outside with another. A lot of times if I'm using a snap gauge or something like that, I'm going to be measuring with the same micrometer. I'm not really worried if that um, that micrometer is perfectly calibrated because I'm going to be getting the same measurement. I'm using the same instrument, but because I'm going to be using different ones, I want to make sure that we're good. So I actually have a ring gauge here and uh, this ring gauge is uh, four inches in diameter. This uh, particular uh, bore micrometer measures between 3.6 and 4 inches. So I'm just going to put it down in here and this is just a known standard. 
and I'm just gonna check that and we're gonna see how it reads and here we go so it is pretty much dead nuts on this it's within actually this measurements in uh, two ten thousandths of an inch increments and it's about two ten thousandths over so um, with the interference fit that we're going to do later on we're going to have uh, it's going to need to be about three or four thousandths larger the bushing so two tenths isn't going to make a difference so we're good to go there so now i'm going to do this come over here and we're going to measure this bore so let me back that off get it down in there and And that's a, just a perfect fit right there. I'm gonna read it while it's in there. So let's see where we're at. So it looks like it's measuring uh, three inches, 749 thousandths. I'll write that down. Three, 0.749, so just a thousandth under three and three quarters of an inch. Now I wanna have interference on here and I'm gonna go for three thousandths interference. So we will want to turn our bushing to be 3,752 thousandths of an inch. And that should give it, make it three thousandths larger. I'm gonna, make several measurements here and just verify that we got it. That's the measurement all the way up and down. Do that off camera. Uh, but that's my, my initial measurement. We may adjust that after I do some more measuring. We'll be back. So the other side is a good bit larger diameter. This side had a lot more wear on it uh, than the other side. So we had to take out a good bit more material. There's also more metal in there to work with than there is on the smaller side. Uh, even though the inside bore is gonna be the same on these, this bushing will be thicker. Now I'm gonna have to go to a different bore mic. This bore mic is same uh, principle, but this one measures between four and five inches. And I've already checked it with my standard. Again, it's measuring. This one measures to half thousandth increments. The other one's measured to two tenths, uh, but it's within half a thou of being where it needs to be. So again, we're gonna come in here now and let's uh, get a measurement. So we are at, all right, so it's measuring four inches, 25 thousandths, pretty much right on the money there within half a thou of that anyway. Uh, we're gonna again make several measurements in here and just make sure we're getting a good measurement. So we got our piece of brass or bronze here for the small side. And again, we're gonna start by boring it, but first I wanna just face this end off. We've gotta actually reduce the length of this by a fair amount. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but it's a little bit oversized right now. We'll get to that in a little bit. Well, let's start by facing that. We're here in touch off. Get my little plastic face shield going here. This uh, bronze tends to want to spray everywhere when you're machining with it. So keep it out of my face. go and just get a rough idea of where we're at so we're about 2 850 and I need to go to uh, 3 4 4 5 so we've got a good bit to take out of there at least 50 60 thousandths or excuse me five six hundred thousandths so uh, it's gonna come in Touch off. I'm gonna do a pretty heavy cut here, right out 100 thousandths total. And just feed on in there. All right, here we go with another pass. Take a little bit more uniform cut this time. All 
right, I'm gonna get a rough measurement here with my calipers so I can see where we're at and kind of be following it on my digital readout. And it looks like we're at two inches, 982 thousandths. I'm gonna put that in my digital readout. All right, we'll take another 100 thou here. This will put us a little over three inches. Come in here again with a bore micrometer. It's So we're at 3.275, 85, 86, 3.284. I'm gonna change my digital read out, it's within a couple thousandths. 3.284. We just measured the first time with the calipers, so this is gonna be a much more accurate measurement. We are going to 3.445. So, uh, yeah, we got almost 200,000 to take out of there still. Not quite. We'll take another 100 thousandths pass. And um, that last measurement, I want to let that cool down because it is getting some warmth to it. Okay, we've let this cool down. It's uh, back at room temperature. So um, what I'm gonna do now, is we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna touch off on it again. And I'm just gonna take a really light pass to clean it up. Right there. I don't wanna take much at all. I just wanna take a little bit out of there. And that'll give us a good measurement to start from. We're getting down really close to that final uh, measurement that we're shooting for, so. Um, I just want to make a good clean pass here after everything's cooled down so that I'm getting an accurate measurement and I, my lathe is set where I can uh, dial off of it from there. So uh, let's get this pass done and we'll take another good measurement and see what we need to go to. All right, we're right on three, four, two, five. I'm gonna put that in my digital readout. 3.425. We're going to 445, so I've only got 20 thou to come out of this. Go to 3.445. And we do have a little wiggle room on this inside bore. Uh, we just basically are going for clearance. So um, actually, if I'm within probably, I don't want to be any less than that, but if I'm five, 10 thousandths over, we're going to be fine, but we're going to try to shoot for that 445. All right, we're at about 347, which uh, is going to be fine. That's good. Uh, we're going to leave it just like it is. I'm going to come in here with my little Noga tool and deburr that bore there since we're going to leave that just like it is and this one needs to be three inches long and we're a good bit over that right now so I need to face off the other side I may uh, cut it on the bandsaw and then uh, come back in here I think I'm going to deburr that outside edge to just uh, get that burr off of it we're going to turn the outside later but It'll just make it easier to handle. So instead of facing off 
half, three quarters of an inch, whatever that is. I'm gonna saw it off using my new marble saw. This is a new uh, tool in my shop. This is one of the first real jobs that I've used it on. So uh, I thought I'd show you real quickly. This whole bandsaw head moves across. It's kind of like what they call a rolling saw, but this is a particular brand of uh, marvel made by Armstrong Blum. Let's uh, try her out here. And we'll let her feed across there. Back over here at the lathe, I got my part turned around. This is the side we just cut, and we want that to be a little over three inches. Three inches, 38 thousandths is what it uh, measured. We're about three inches, 100 thousandths right now. Let's clean that up. Ooh, let's see if we can get that running a little bit truer than that. Running pretty true on the outside. We got a little wobble on the cut, but uh, we're about to clean that up. You can see it's making an interrupted cut right there. All right, I see where we're at on the length here. Still got just one little area there that it hasn't cut. I wanna make sure I'm measuring on where we have. And all right, we're at three inches, 120. Put that in my readout. 3.120 enter and we're going to take that down to about three let's see three inches 38 thousandths was the total depth i'll probably shoot for a three inches 20 thousandths so um, we're just going to work our way down That's exactly what I dialed in, three inches, 20 thousandths. That'd give me about 20 thousandths clearance, 18 thousandths clearance at the end of the hole. And let's go ahead and break that outside edge there. Be uh, machined down later, but it just makes it easier to handle right now. And we'll deburr the inside of this hole using my Noga deburring tool. All right, the inside diameter is done. And this one just needs to be turned on the OD and I need to get the other uh, piece of bronze bored out on the inside as well. All right, this is the piece of bronze that uh, I got from McMaster Car. And honestly, most of this piece of bronze is gonna end up in my chip pan. I really hated to buy a piece so big, but it was the only option I had to get the uh, inside and outside diameters where I needed them. Um, anyway, we got a lot to bore out of there. That inside diameter is two inches, two and three eighths inches, and we got to go to 3.445. So it's got over, uh, what is that? That's, uh, that's an inch that's got to come out of that inside diameter. And then I don't remember what the outside diameter is, but there's a good bit. We're going to turn off of it as well. This is uh, the initial cut. We'll touch off. This first cut's a little bit of a, not interrupted, but that, this is extruded material. So that hole isn't perfectly round. So it's uh, taking more off of one side than the other. I'm hoping we don't get that vibration as we continue on. I wish I had a little bit larger diameter boring bar, but uh, and I do, but I, it won't fit on this lathe with my current tool holder, holders. If I continue to get a bunch of uh, vibration, I may have to do a little upgrade before I finish this out. All right, let's do another 100 thou. Still got a good bit of vibration in there. All 
Yeah, there's a lot of chatter. Tell you what, let me, uh, I may have to order a new boring bar. I can, I think that's a one inch boring bar. All right, guys, I've got a one inch boring bar in here right now. And it's, it's sticking out as far as it is. We got six inches sticking out. There's just too much flex in this thing. Uh, and we're getting some vibration in there. Now my holder here, you can tell there's a bushing in here. It'll take a boring bar that's an inch and a quarter in diameter. The problem is, is I don't have an inch and a quarter diameter boring bar. I think what I'm gonna do is just order me one. Uh, I do have an inch and a half uh, boring bar, but it won't fit this block and I don't have any, anything on this lathe big enough that will hold it. Um, I may even see if I can get a boring bar holder that will hold an inch and a half and uh, look at that option as well. Uh, but regardless, I really just need a bigger diameter boring bar for this particular job. And uh, I can order one, have it here in a day or two. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna take a pause right now and uh, see if we can get the right tooling to do this job right. Uh, I'm sure that if this was a rush job, I could slow down and uh, you know, maybe, maybe not take as deep of a cut and probably get by, but I just wanna get a better finish than that. And it's gonna be hard to do uh, with this particular setup. So anyway, time to take a break. We'll be back once we get some uh, different tooling in the shop. Well, as promised, uh, we have upgraded boring bars here. So what I ended up doing, first off, this is the original boring bar that we were using, one inch diameter. This is a inch and a half diameter boring bar that I had. And basically, if you look here, you know, you got a hole through this, there's a bushing in there. The hole is inch and a quarter. So I couldn't get my inch and a half in there, but they make a different model boring bar block that holds an inch and a half and it has a bushing that will also let you use an inch and a quarter. So uh, I got me a bigger uh, Allure's tool block holder here to hold the larger boring bar and uh, that should go a long way toward helping to stiffen this up a little bit, hopefully take some of the vibration out of this bar while it's turning. Now another issue I may run into is because of the stick out here, only gripping it in a small area back here and having a, probably about four times as much sticking out as what I'm grabbing. I may get a little vibration in the bushing itself. If that happens, I'll probably just turn back a little bit on the outside and put my uh, steady rest in here, which will dampen any vibrations, but we're gonna try it like this first. So uh, I've got everything back together. Just make sure yeah, that's good and tight. Eight. Got a little uh, run out in it. Face that front. It's got a hundred thousandths uh, cut out in there. Let's roll through and see what it does. Sounded better. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, nice finish in there. That's what we're after. And it looks like we're right on the money. Well, we're about four tenths under the mark we were shooting for according to the, the bore micrometer here. Uh, and that's gonna be perfectly fine. We've actually got plenty of, we're just trying to get some clearance on the inside of that bore. So four tenths isn't gonna matter one bit. I'm not gonna try to run another pass through there or anything like that, it's just not worth it. So uh, that bore is done. So to turn the outside of this bushing concentric to the inside, running on this exact same plane, we're gonna use this uh, tapered mandrel or expanding mandrel to uh, set it up on. So the way this works, you got a mandrel and then you got this piece here. You see it's got all the cuts in it. This will slide on this mandrel and as it slides down, this gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you basically just slide your bushing into it. And as it gets bigger and bigger, it will just by friction capture everything in there. So let's uh, kind of get it down here. All right, it's starting to touch about right there.
All right, that is sandwiched in there. Everything's good and tight. And I can now put this mandrel on my lathe running between centers and the outside should be running perfectly concentric to the inside. So I'll put a drive dog on this end. I need to get a center in uh, the headstock in and start turning. Let me get it set up. And I got the first bushing mounted on the expanding mandrel. The mandrel is running between centers. So basically we have a center up here, which is just coming out to a point. It's been, I turned this on the lathe. So it's running perfectly true to my spindle in the three jaw chuck. I've got a live center on this end. This is a dead center, but it's spinning with the truck chuck. And then we also got this drive dog. The drive dog just clamps to the mandrel. And basically a little tab comes out here as the chuck turns, it rotates this uh, mandrel because it's between centers, it could just spin on it. So, uh, and let's see. As you can see, it's, it appears to be running very true. So we should be good to go. Uh, we'll come out here and start by, I'm just gonna touch off about where we were before and finish turning that out. I just turned a clean shot all the way across there. I want to get a good measurement. And we are at four inches, 398 thousandths. And that's what I got in my DRO, so that looks good. We're going to four inches and 28 thousandths. So we've got quite a bit to come off of there. Let's go ahead and crank it all out. Right, this is 200 thousandths total cut. We're going to hog some metal off. We've let this cool down completely. In fact, I went and grabbed some supper and came back out here to the shop. Been gone about an hour or so. And we've lost right at a thousandth of an inch in diameter just by that thing cooling down. So it's exactly what I kind of expected. So we're at uh, four inches and 49 and a half thou. So what I think I'm going to do, we're going to four inch 25 thou. So let me get the lathe going. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to do about 10 thou. Let's let that pass go across. So that gives us a new measurement to work with after it cooled down and we made a cut. As a reference, so I'm going to put this number in my digital readout, whatever it comes out to be. And we're at 25 plus 17, 4.042. All right. I'm just going to dial it in. Right there. This should be the final pass. And because I don't really want to make a mistake here, I'm going to stop right there. And let's just make sure that we're not messing up here. Right on the money, 28. Okay. Let's double check our work here. We are right on the money exactly, not even a tenth off. So uh, that's good, just what we want. So let me take this cutter out. I'm gonna put in my chamfering cutter. And just get rid of that sharp burr on the edge. And we'll come to the front up here. 
And I'm gonna chamfer this one a little bit heavier. This is gonna be the side that I feed, that I press in from. And that'll just kind of help me get it started. All right, this bronze bushing is all finished. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this one off. I'll put the other one on here. I'll get it turned down on the outside. I'm not gonna show that one. And these will be ready to press in. So we got both of our bronze bushings turned now, inside and outside. The, again, the outside is gonna be a press fit about three to four thousandths interference, if I remember right, somewhere in that ballpark. We looked the number up in Machinery's Handbook, and these all pretty much are right on the money. The inside bore, uh, they're all also pretty much right on the money, but we've got about 10 to 15 thousandths of clearance on the shaft that's gonna be on there because this basically just needs to spin. So um, let's just see here. This is the bushing that goes in this end, and you can see it kind of starts but doesn't go in and that's exactly what we want um, what I'm going to do is uh, we're gonna go out to the museum and use the hydraulic press to press these in but before we do we're gonna cheat a little bit uh, we're gonna we're gonna make the dimensions where they'll fit better and the way I'm gonna do that is number one I'm gonna take these bronze bushings I'm gonna put them in the freezer and let them just soak for several hours and the temperature by cooling it will cause it to shrink in fact we'll get a measurement uh, before and after just to see how much it shrinks probably just a thou or two it's not gonna be a lot and the same thing on the, the the arm here when we get out to the museum I'm gonna use the torch we're gonna just heat it up to a couple hundred degrees not like super hot that will make it larger. And more than likely, these bushings will just fall right in. If not, we can use the press to press them in lightly. But then when the temperature equalizes, it's going to shrink around uh, these, these bushings and everything will be super tight and everything should be good. That's the game plan. Um, yeah, let's, let's uh, just double check our measurements. Uh, actually, I got them written down, but I'll, I'll double check them and then we'll compare those after they come out of the freezer just to see what kind of difference we get. So we are just about ready to go ahead and press these bushings in, but I want to just cover a couple things real quickly. So first off, as promised, I took those bronze bushings and I measured them uh, before I put them in the freezer. They've been in the freezer overnight. They've had time to cool down and really get, you know, completely saturated to that temperature and equalize. And uh, I'm not going to show it because I don't want to take them out and, and it just takes time. And as it warms up, it's going to start growing. But both of the bronze bushings that I made, they both shrunk almost exactly three thousandths of an inch, which ironically is also the exact amount that I made them oversized for an interference fit. I probably could come over here and press those things in right now without doing anything else, but I'm going to put the odds in my favor and we're going to put some heat on this part, uh, which will make this diameter actually grow in size, hopefully by a thousandths or two. And when everything's said and done, they should just drop right in. Uh, may require a little bit of a press power, which is why I'm over here at the Arbor Press. I don't ever like to assume they're gonna go in without any pressure. I like to have the, the Arbor Press ready to go just in case. Uh, and more than likely, even with everything, uh, even with having a couple of thousandths difference between the two sizes with the temperature gradients, um, it's still probably gonna take a little bit of pressure to get them in there is my, my bet. So uh, we're gonna put some heat in here with the torch, get it heated up to probably a couple hundred degrees, nothing crazy. And uh, then I'll go grab the, uh, grab the bushings out of the freezer and we'll press them in. So I'm gonna be doing that rather quickly when the time comes. So uh, I'm not gonna be talking a lot, but I'll show you the process. All right, here we go. It's gonna take my time, put some heat in here. I know my gas pressure is getting down a little bit low on my tank, so I hope I got enough to do this. Uh, if not, we'll have to stop and go to town and get my bottles refilled, which I need to do anyway. But uh, again, we're just gonna get this heated up a couple hundred degrees and that should be ready to go. All right, here we go. I got my frozen piece. Let's just hope that falls right in place. going nice and easy. Getting a little bit tough there at the end. All right, we're home. All right, one of them is in. Let's, uh, I'm gonna let this temperature equalize just a few minutes and we'll flip it over and do the other side. So we are ready to put our second bushing in. 
I will say that uh, I had to go refuel, my, fill up my tanks. That's what I wanted to do right there. Had to refill my tank. Uh, my, it just wasn't putting out a lot of heat yesterday. So I went and got the tanks refilled last night or yesterday afternoon. And uh, I waited till this, the next morning to do this job because I had laid my settling tank down flat to haul it home and uh, I wanted to get it a chance to equalize everything. You're not supposed to use that tank until it's been sitting back upright for a while. But as you can see, uh, we put some heat in there and that expanded that out. This was a th 3 thousandths interference fit. Whenever the temperature equalizes, uh, that bushing will be in there and be in there well. So we should be ready to go. So I think we are done with this job. We're gonna let this cool down. Uh, I'll show you the bushings real good and we'll be ready to send this down to Florida and get it put back on to that K steam engine. All right, here's a look. This is the small bushing side uh, that we pressed in first. It's got a little frosting in there left over from that ice, I think, but it'll clean right out. But that one looks good and uh, we'll flip it over and take a look at the other side. And this is the larger bushing and uh, it also looks good. You can see where this little area here, this is where it wore into the cast and we elected not to face it down past that. But uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm tickled with how that turned out. I think everything looks good and uh, that's going to be, both of these bushings are in there plenty tight now that the temperature is equalized and they've gone back to their regular size. Uh, should be a good time, nice tight fit. And there we go. I think we got this job complete. But before I wrap this up, I have to make a confession and uh, I didn't show this on video, but very frustrating. Mr. Bozo did come to town on this project and messed me up. And uh, let me show you this. I've got an extra <laughs> bronze bushing here. Uh, this was about a $300 mistake that I made and it's all on me. But what happened is, is when I measured the bore on the large size originally, I misread my bore micrometer by one whole turn. Um, one turn on that bore micrometer is 50 thousandths of an inch. This bushing is exactly 50 thousandths too small. Uh, I didn't show it, I just went ahead and ordered a new piece of bronze and, and made it. It was the exact same process as before. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show that, yes, I make mistakes. Every machinist that works in a shop is gonna make a mistake from time to time. Unfortunately, this one was a very expensive mistake for me and unfortunately, that happens as well. But uh, I did just want to share that. Uh, I'm not trying to hide anything. I don't want you guys to think I'm perfect because I'm far from perfect. Uh, it was an honest mistake. Could have happened to anyone. The rule of thumb is, and my rule of thumb is always measure twice, cut once. And uh, I didn't do that this one time and it caught me. And if I had gone back and remeasured that bore before I went to the lathe instead of just going off the numbers I had written down, probably wouldn't have happened, uh, but it did. And uh, this piece of material, like I said, with the shipping and everything was about $300 and uh, I'm gonna have to eat it, but that's, uh, that's part of the game. Uh, it happens to everyone from time to time. Um, so anyway, with that guys, uh, that's gonna be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated and hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.